Welcome back to another Code Untapped Tech Talk. You've got me, Ez, and my co-founder, Jason. Say hey, Jay. Hey, guys. How's it going? Yeah, you've got to remember, some of these are podcasts, mate. No, they can't see your face. <laughs> they can hear your voice. <laughs> um, I think today we're, we're going to talk a bit about what skills do I need to get into tech, right? Yeah, we are, actually. Yeah, yeah. We're going to focus on those uh, those key things that keep you focused and keep you on point. Yeah, so maybe we should start with you know what training did we do to get into technology? We've both worked in large companies and banks. You've worked in technology businesses as well. I think you were at Marconi, which is a technology which is a telecoms company. Um, I've built startups. You know, we, we've worked in all sorts, but very much strong tech. Um, but I think it'd be useful to start there. I know, so I did a computer science degree. So I did like the traditional computer science A-level, um, IT, GCSE, which was a waste of time. <laughs> and then um, uh, I did a computer science degree. And as part of that, I did a year in industry, which allowed me to uh, do an internship for a bank. I think I did that at Lehman Brothers and that helped me get into, into, into the industry. But you didn't go through that route, did you? You did a physics degree. So how did you get into tech? Yeah, so I did a physics degree, then I did a master's in electrical engineering. And in the master's, I think we did, we started to touch on a bit of programming. It was, it was yeah, such a long time ago now, I'm so old. But it was, I think it was a bit of Fortran, to be honest. And we did a bit of, um, did a bit of VBA stuff as well. Um, but it wasn't until I, was it? I took, I took my first role at GC Marconi, and actually, we I worked in the defense division of GC Marconi. So that was, oh, wow. yeah, yeah, that was pretty interesting, and that was uh, my first introduction to really like what I would call formal coding, and um, the, the language of choice there. Well, it was the operating system was was <laughs> VMX, um, VMS VAX, uh, which is a very very old operating system. It's, it's quite similar to Unix or Linux. And um, the programming language that they were using there was ADA. So it was really strongly typed language. Wow, okay. um, that's old Yeah, so that's proper old school. And I wouldn't encourage anybody to start with <laughs> ADA. <laughs> if anyone's listening, please don't go. Do not start with ADA and do not start with VMS Vex. But um, so what did I do? I mean, I um, we, we were sort of given certain there were certain books at the time which were really uh like the foundation people called them like the foundation of like programming so there was one by there's like kernigan and ritchie where, so there's like the c programming language by kernigan and ritchie and that's like that was the book to start you off if you wanted to be like a serious coder and there was a book uh, i think it was by one of them, I think it was either Koenigan or Ritchie, on Unix as well, and it's very similar. And they weren't very big books, actually, but they gave you, uh, they sort of put you into the mindset of a developer and what languages are about and stuff like that. And that was sort of my first um, learning those, going through those books and doing Fortran, uh, sorry, not Fortran, uh, ADA. That was my um, sort of first foray in, in, into programming. But it's interesting now, I think, um, with, with because we at that time, the web wasn't really developed at all. So we didn't, there was no massive resource that you have now that you can just Google, yeah? yeah. And, and it's interesting. Well, Google only came out, came out the year before I started university. So what, 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 so what year was that then? Is what, uh, what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that? What was that? Oh, yeah, no, that was a, no. I, I started uni in 1997. I think it was. Was it 98? I can't yeah, remember. Yeah. Um, because I actually reset my A levels. Yeah. So um, yeah. <laughs> it's a long time. A long time. Yeah, it's interesting. So because you've got, you know, you've got, you've got Google. So and you've got like you've got YouTube. Yeah, and you've right. got tons of resources there's all these you know Media. and stuff like that as well so there's so many options um on how to do stuff yeah but yeah. it is but i think for the more it depends so there are 
the thing about technology, there's so many different areas that you can go into. It's such a wide space. When people talk about technology, all right, so do you want to go into the cloud? Do you want to be a data scientist? Do you want to be a full stack developer? There's so well, there's all these different areas that you could move into. And it's like, well, where do you start? Yeah. yeah. And um, I always start, well, what's the path of least resistance? What's the path of least resistance? What's the way that you can sort of build up knowledge, but build up confidence? in mm. what you're yeah. doing well and that's important in anything that you do that you know you, you you don't try and you know scale the mountain you just take small steps yeah uh, but, but that's a really key point to any type of learning right or any progress you have to have those small successes along the way so small successes that make you feel good make you feel confident make it fun and give you that sense of all oh, I, I can do more right Definitely. But when it's just one long, hard grind, you fall out, you drop out. You know, sure, for sure, for sure. I'm not interested in doing this. For sure, for sure. And um, even with my boys, my young boys, um, uh, and I'm getting them introduced into code, uh, coding and... and How old are they now? You're getting them into coding? <laughs> well, my youngest is eight and my oldest... Oh, okay. Is yeah, and my oldest is 14. So it's interesting because what do I... What, how, how do I approach... How do I approach it with them? Well... I want them to get feedback as soon as possible. I want them to get that wow factor. Oh, wow, this is really exciting. Oh, I just did something here. So, you know, I mean, for kids, obviously, it's stuff like Scratch because they can get that from. But for, for older individuals or people transitioning into technology and stuff like that, I would always start with the web-based technologies. So I would always yeah. start with things like, you know, well, how does a web page work? You know, so start with HTML, yeah? and then CSS, and then JavaScript. So, you know, and it's really about presentation, styling, and then making it interactive, yeah? yeah. And then um, and then that starts to actually give you an introduction to things like asynchronous programming, actually, because all of the calls in JavaScript are asynchronous, right. yeah? So that's good, and event-driven and stuff like that. And then you can move on to, uh, then then that gives you an appreciation of what you have to do to you know handle a user interface and what sort of things you have to think about mm. and then i would then because that whole family of languages there's lots of frameworks that have been built off of that javascript or web-based technology family of technologies um then you can you can sort of choose you can go in start looking at some stuff in the mobile space yeah. it's learning react and maybe react native yeah, that's that's a way to go. And you you haven't actually taken on a new, a whole new language, but yet you can apply it to a whole different area. So we were looking at web pages, but now also you can start looking at mobile apps. Yeah, just because you have an understanding or an appreciation of JavaScript. Yeah. Yeah. And then from there you can move on to say the server side. Yeah. So what we call the back end. So where all of the processing happens, where you're going to save data and save states and stuff like that. And again, you can use a language like Node.js, which is effectively JavaScript on the server side. Yeah. And again, you've just learned one language and you can now build a front to back application. You can become a full stack developer. Yeah. And then there's different, and then that leads on to other types of technologies like object, uh, object databases like MongoDB, yeah, in, instead of relational databases and all of that sort of stuff. And then you can branch off and say, well, I want to might want to specialize in the mobile space and take on more specialized mobile languages like Java and um, Swift or Object C, or look at other frameworks like Flutter or Xamarin, stuff like that for mobile development. Or maybe you want to learn something like Python, but because you've got that foundation of understanding a language, yeah, and you can understand another language. Yeah, because no, you I agree. The base, you understand all the bases uh, and the constructs. And JavaScript is a really, it's a really forgiving language to learn because you get mm. those benefits of being able to see the fruits of your labor very, very quickly. Absolutely. Yeah, you can teach some bad, bad habits. It, though, yes, because it's, so yeah, because it's dynamic. It's not strongly tied and all of that stuff. And all of these words that I'm talking about, they may sound a bit complicated, but they're not. And as you learn more about the language you really start to understand all of those concepts yeah yeah no. and i the key question with a lot of these is where do you learn all of this right because one we often get asked these questions about what should i learn how do i learn it where do i learn it 
for me, one of the best resources out there is W3 schools. For sure. none, right? It's free, it's available. You don't even have to sign in to use it. You just type it into your browser, w3schools.com, and you can learn all of the, all of the technologies that you've, you've highlighted, particularly JavaScript, mm. um, HTML, CSS, all mm. the web tech. Mm. Node.js, so they've got a course on yeah, yeah. Got, and Mongo got a course on MongoDB all, and, yeah, they have, yeah. or PostgreSQL, mm. all available on there. So you can learn all the basics of how to program. And that's really, really important is have that facility available to you. And then when you, if you need to find out more about it, you know, you've got YouTube, you've got Wikipedia, you've got all these other places. But the one aspect to it that I think is really important and where a lot of people fail is that sense of success, right? Because you can do all the learning, but if you don't feel any tangible outcome from it, again, it gets boring. You stop mm. doing it. So people try to make up projects. Oh, I'll build a web page or whatever. The problem is because it's not a real tangible outcome, they lose, they lose momentum, they lose steam, right? So my thing is always try and find a project to get involved in. Definitely. As you're learning these skill sets, right? Mm. And even if, uh, for me, the number one place to find projects is GitHub, right? Mm. There are, GitHub is an open source community. And the great thing about it, people think, well, you know, I don't know anyone. I don't know any of these projects. I can't blah, 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 blah. The fact is they're open. So you can just clone someone's repo, search, have a play with it, make a code change, submit a pull request back to them. And if they want to accept it, fantastic. And you know what? They've just taken on board some of the work that you've done. And now you're a collaborator on that project. And you mm -hmm. can do that with any open, that the whole Microsoft C Sharp library is available in open source on GitHub. Mm -hmm. If you want to become mm -hmm. a contributor to Microsoft code base, you can download, you can clone one of their repos today, make a code mm -hmm. change and commit it to the repository, mm -hmm. right? Um, provided they accept your pull request, of course. You know. <laughs> so I think that is really, really important. Obviously, doing something like that is a bit further down the road, but I think it's really important that you find these little projects, even if all you're doing is just getting involved in testing or updating their documentation, just getting into the habit of taking your learning and applying it to something is really valuable. And that's where you know, you talk, can, people ask about transferable skills, right? Especially if they've never worked in technology and they go, well, I was a designer or I was an accountant or, you know, I, I was in retail. What do I, how do I get into this space if I, if I don't know anything about programming? But you've already used systems. Mm. You've had to use apps. You've had to use computers. You've had to go from A to B. You've got a sense in your own mind of how things work and how to apply yourself to a problem space. And it's really just about taking some of those skills and reapplying it to learning, reading, and trying to fix a problem. Programming yeah. is all about fixing problems, right? For sure. It's literally what yeah. we're doing always. Yeah. I, I always used to um, equate it to, puzzle, to completing a puzzle. It was like, it's a puzzle, and I've just got to figure out where all the pieces go. And then eventually yeah. the picture. The weird thing is, is that your picture might look completely different to mine, even though we've got the same pieces. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah, and I mean, that is definitely, as you've, t you, you've hit the nail on the head there, it's definitely, um, I mean, I, I, I like to use the analogy of Lego. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, the pieces are there, you just need to put it together. Yeah. I actually think and, that's a better analogy. Yeah. I like that, I'm gonna use that. <laughs> yeah. Lego is much better than puzzle. <laughs> But yeah, just so there's two things actually. I just want to go back quickly to W3 schools. W3 schools is really good because all of the information that is all of the information that they're trying to relay to you is all fed in bite-sized bits. So it's all little tiny tutorials that will take you five, ten minutes to do. Yeah? yeah. And you do something and you because you're actually following the tutorial, you'll retain that information. Mm -hmm. But going back to GitHub, GitHub, and GitHub is really, really good for a number of reasons. Obviously, you know, you've got that first, you've got that first reason of actually you're doing a real project. Yeah. So you're actually working some working on something that people are going to use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's a, that, that, that's one good thing. But actually also you're learning how to collaborate and work, work with a team. Yeah. Yeah. That's important when you actually need to go into uh, that working environment. 
if you become you know a technologist yeah so you've already learned all the skills you've learned all of the uh the tooling the tooling that you'll need you know the, the editors vs code eclipse or whatever you've learned that stuff and then also um it allows you to build up a network so a network yeah. of you know fellow technologists designers Absolutely. you know people Absolutely. in the problem space you know i like to call uh, github instagram for coders it is that's, for sure yeah that's what it is it's a coders social network yeah so i mean you just got to be in there and you got me you got to be in it to win it so yeah github's a really really good a good place to you know to sort of really practice your skills and get what, what you touched on as well though around collaboration and working with people really some of those soft skills as well right and mm -hmm. this is always transferable that ability to manage communication, manage your time, and manage other people, work with other people, solve problems in a collaborative way. And the thing is, like coders, we, we, we're all on the spectrum in one way, shape, or other. Some of us a little bit further along than others. And being able to manage problems, work together to get to a resolution with people like that mm. is really, really important. It is. Um, and it's also when you're thinking about planning, you're thinking about designing, testing, um, uh, all of that requires an ability to think beyond just coding. Mm. And more to, well, how do we actually get this problem solved? Mm. Right? What are the barriers to doing so? And how do I work with this group of individuals to do that? You, get, you do get lone wolf coders. I don't like working with them, I've got to be mm. honest. I mm. mean, to me, most lone wolf coders can do some fantastic work, but they're never going to work well with a team. Yeah. And, you know, even if you've got a 10x coder, working by themselves, they will never get as much done as working in a team that's collaborating and working well and working on a good cadence together. Because that one person can't code, test, design, debug all at the same time. It's just not possible. Mm. Um, and Developers make the worst testers. They, so, test, <laughs> they, they test the code that they've written and not the actual edge cases on how people yeah, exactly. use the code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they barely test the code that they've written. They test the edge, they test the outcome that they're looking for, yeah. right? And that's what they test for. And that's not a good approach, right? Not a good approach at all. And definitely, I 100% agree with you, is, and in particular, like the, the economies of scale, as as the program that you're as, as the application or process that you're building gets larger and more complex yeah the problem space gets larger and more complex and you so you need to actually share that problem it's you need to share that problem space with a number of different people and people who think about that problem space in a different way so you you'll have creatives designers thinking about Absolutely. how you might use your product yeah you have um you have architects thinking about how from a technical perspective, we should put the pieces, the technology pieces together, the different frameworks, how they should reside together to provide the solution. Yeah, okay. you have all of these different uh, people, different disciplines coming into the same problem space. And actually what you are doing is you're solving a, a requirement, a real life Absolutely. for somebody. And this is where, and then as a developer, you actually start understanding the domain space as well when you become a domain expert so not just a technologist but a technologist in a domain space and so you might become a financial technologist yeah, yeah? or a telecoms expert yeah? yeah as a technologist or something like that and that's even more interesting because then you you really add value so you 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 then start to spot where the technology solution will add value to the space that you're in yeah yeah for your but customers not, but so if we were to wrap all of that up around you know what skills do we need to get into technology we touched on you know start with the web techs so mm. javascript html well particularly start with html look at css move on to javascript mm. from there you have you have everything you need to build a front end something maybe mm. a web page with a customized javascript from there have a think about node.js that gives you the ability to code on the back end have a look at PostgreSQL or MongoDB. You've now got database tech, so you can actually take information, deal with it on the server, persist it into a database. And then you've got tool sets like React, you've got Xamarin, you can now start thinking about building 
uh, mobile apps, web apps as well. Mm -hmm. Now to learn a lot of this tech, great place to start, as we said, um, w3schools.com, fantastic location. And then ultimately apply yourself to real world projects by going on to GitHub. And mm -hmm. don't forget to bring your soft skills to the table because um, it's all about collaboration, it's all about communication, it's all about working with other developers and stakeholders and developing, as you said, Jay, that domain knowledge and understanding the space. Mm -hmm. So for that, I think that's a pretty good summary around <laughs> our thinking about how do I become a technologist, right? Yeah. In, in like 20 minutes. That's yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. And then one last thing, yeah, don't be put off. Yeah, so Absolutely. if you get stuck, yeah, you just keep trying and trying and get persistent and get persistence and reach out to people, reach out to people, yeah, for help. So I think one, one last point because a lot of people go, okay, it's so all this great stuff about learning tech, but do we need developers going forward? And we, we did a poll, didn't we, on our, on, our, on our LinkedIn channel, and it was asking a question, will no code frameworks eliminate the need for mobile and web devs? And I don't think it will come as much of a surprise that we had a 100% vote for no. <laughs> no. No code frameworks are amazing. And they allow a lot of experimental thinking. They allow non-technical teams to get moving. But you will always reach a point where you need technologists, I think. For sure. And I 100% agree with that. Because you know, technologists, they look at problems in a different way. And what you want when you're solving a problem is actually you want cognitive diversity. So you want people looking at a problem from different angles. And, and it's the meeting of those different experiences who, where the real innovative solutions really uh, spring forth. So definitely, you, there will definitely always be a strong need for a strong technologist in a team where you're building stuff like that, yeah. Absolutely. So just to let everyone know, we've got one last poll, or not one last poll, we've got another poll running at the moment, which is particularly pertinent to the workshop we're doing next week, which we'll touch in a second. But the latest poll is, do you think you need to have a degree to work for Google? I know it's a really interesting question. We're already seeing some split results on this. Because Jason and I both got degrees. Interestingly, some of my managers back in my day uh, at Lehman Brothers didn't have degrees and went straight into technology. So um, I think it's going to, it's a bit interesting. So if you've got an opinion, go onto our LinkedIn page, Code Untapped, put, put, make your voice heard, okay? And then finally, yeah, biggest thing, we have our Coder's Journey to Google workshop with Google next week, 4th of August, six o'clock p.m. and it's going to be a panel of current okay. google google First engineers ignore that it's my phone responding to me using the word google um <laughs> but <laughs> we're gonna have a panel of google engineers talking about their experience of um being interviewed and actually getting into google and all the you know the, the challenges they had to overcome to get there so that's going to be amazing Look forward to it and look forward to hearing from seeing you all next week. So, Jay, any last words from you? See you on see you next week on um, Wednesday, the fourth. And uh, until then, carry on coding. Fantastic. See you next time. <laughs>